Hi, I'm Jill Goldsmith, Chatham Town Manager, and thank you for joining us for the 2024 Annual Town Meeting Preview Show. Team Chatham staff will review each article in detail and note recommendations from the Select Board and the Finance Committee. Don't forget, the town's website is a great resource for town meeting. In addition to the warrant, you will find Town Meeting Central, where we have compiled a wealth of meeting information, including a scorecard of each article detailing all recommendation votes. Town Meeting will be held at the Monomoy Regional Middle School, 425 Kroll Road, beginning at 6 p.m. on Monday, May 13th, and our annual town election will be held on Thursday, May 16th at the Community Center. This year, we welcome our new Town of Chatham Finance Director, Carrie Mazzarell. Since her arrival in Chatham, Carrie has been steadfast working to bring the fiscal year 2025 budget together. She has overseen budgetary presentations from all town departments to the Finance Committee and to the Select Board. Welcome, Carrie, to your first preview show. Thank you, Jill. Hi, my name is Carrie Maserol and I am the Town of Chatham's Finance Director. The first article to discuss is Article Number 3, Prior Year Bill Payments. This article is for the approval of prior year bills in the amount of $1,330.25. These are for invoices that came in after the close of the fiscal year and there is no encumbrance for. This requires a town meeting vote of four-fifths the majority. The funding source is free cash. There is no impact to the tax rate. Select Board voted five in favor and zero opposed, and the Finance Committee voted nine in favor, zero opposed. Article number four, current year budget adjustments. This article currently does not have any amount associated with it as we are still reviewing the current FY 2024 ledger. Select Board votes and Finance Committee votes will be presented on town meeting floor. Moving on to article five, this article is an annual article to fix the salaries for elected officials. This article does not appropriate any funds. However, it sets the salaries for the current fiscal year for select board members and town moderator. Any funding for this is under the operating budget, article number nine. Please note there is a typo on the fiscal years in the warrant. The correct fiscal years should be FY 2024 voted and FY 2025 request. Select Board voted five in favor and zero opposed, and the Finance Committee voted nine in favor, zero opposed. Article six, this article is for the approval of expenditure limits for FY 2025 from the consolidated revolving funds. There are five revolving funds that require town meeting approval. The Bassett House Revolving Fund spending limit of $8,000. Inspectional Services Revolving Fund spending limit of $150,000. Recycling Revolving Fund Spending Limit of $5,000, Marconi Station Revolving Fund Spending Limit of $10,000, and the Waterways User Fee Revolving Fund Spending Limit of $1,000,000. Revolving funds are funded by receipts received for a specific purpose, which they were originally established and must have enough funds to cover any expenses that may incur. No deficit spending is allowed. Select Board voted five in favor, zero opposed, and Finance Committee nine in favor, zero opposed. Article seven, Airport Revolving Fund Authorization. Article seven is for the approval of expenditure limits for the Airport Revolving Fund for FY 2025 in the amount of $150,000. The Select Board voted five in favor and zero opposed, and Finance Committee nine in favor, zero opposed. Article 8, Wood Waste Reclamation Facility Enterprise Fund. This article is to fund the Enterprise Fund in the amount of $25,000. Per Mass General Law, annual authorization for this fund needs town meeting approval every year. Select Board voted five in favor, zero opposed, and Finance Committee nine in favor, zero opposed. Article 9 is the town's operating budget for FY 2025. The operating budget is presented at $40,085,339. This is a 5.24% over the current fiscal year budget or an increase of $1,994,799. Further details of the town operating budget is available in Appendix C of the town meeting warrant, starting on page A56, 
Details are also included in the FY 2025 digital budget book located on Budget Central. Select Board voted four in favor and zero opposed, and Finance Committee voted eight in favor, zero opposed, one abstained. Currently, the FY 2025 operating budget and capital budget provide no change to the current tax rate. As we start to consider more warrant articles, the projected tax rate is 375, which is 5.04% more than the current FY 2024 tax rate. Please note there is a typo on the percentage of 3.92% in the warrant and the correct amount is 5.04%. Article 10 is the Monomoy Regional School District Assessment for FY 2025. This is presented at $10,308,940. This is an increase of 6.2% or $598,491 over the current year's assessment. The select board voted five in favor, zero opposed, and the finance committee, eight in favor, zero opposed. Article 11 is a request from the Monomoy Regional School District from the Public Educational and Governmental Cable Access Funding for which the school is entitled. The Monomoy School is requesting $41,603 for the purpose of funding installation of fiber cables and equipment for the planned press box. The select board voted to approve this article, four in favor, zero opposed. Finance committee voted eight in favor, zero opposed. Article 12, Monomoy Regional School District's capital borrowing authorization for the Monomoy Middle School siting and trim replacement project. The Monomoy Regional School District School Committee plans to vote a debt exclusion in the amount of 2.5 million to replace siding and trim at the Monomoy Middle School and is required to provide notification to each town. The district requested that both towns place an article on each annual town meeting warrant to approve such. Chatham's estimated share in FY26 is $49,779 for 20 years. Harwich share is $166,221. The district would incur the full cost of the borrowing and include the debt payments as part of each town's annual assessment. The select board voted to approve 500 and the finance committee voted to approve 700. Article 13 is the FY 2025 assessment for Cape Cod Regional Technical High School. This is presented at $575,479. Has an increase of $199,376 over the current FY 2024 assessment, which is due to the increase of students from 13 students to 20 students, and also includes the debt service for the new school. The select board voted to approve this four in favor and zero opposed, and finance committee voted nine in favor, zero opposed. Article 14 Collective Bargaining Agreement Settlements placeholder. The town has five collective bargaining units, also referred to as unions. This is a placeholder article for collective bargaining agreements that expire on June 30th, 2024, which are in current negotiations and if funding is needed for the ratification. Funding for these agreements was not included in the FY 2025 proposed operating budget under Article 8. The select board must vote to ratify the agreements at a select board meeting. Collective bargaining agreements are posted on the town's website and available for public review in the office of the Select Board Town Manager at 549 Main Street. Both the Select Board and the Finance Committee will announce their recommendations on town meeting floor. And now we're moving to Article 15, the Water Department Budget. I'd like to introduce our Director of Public Works, Rob Faley. Rob? Article 15 is the Water Department Operating Budget for FY 2025. The amount requested is $4,399,250. Water Department operating budget funded by revenue generated from receipts or ratepayers continues to be monitored as conservation measures have reduced revenues. At this time, we project water revenues will cover the FY25 proposed budget without an increase in water rates or additional reliance on the tax levy. The increase in the water budget is due to increased costs for plant maintenance, additional costs for chemicals to treat the water, and labor. Debt service will decrease slightly in FY25 due to declining debt service for the water treatment plant, which was financed through the Drinking Water Trust Fund at a 2% interest rate. The select board recommended this article 
with a vote of 5-0-0. And the Finance Committee recommended this article with a vote of 7-0-2. Moving on to Article 16, the FY 2025 capital budget is recommended at $2,417,220, which is a 5.57% of the operating budget. The capital plan is funded by free cash and other available funds for capital purchases of equipment, vehicles, and other large purchases that cost between ten and $250 thousand dollars. Page A33 has detailed listing of the FY 2025 capital requests. The select board voted to approve this article four in favor, zero opposed, and finance committee voted eight in favor, one abstained. There are two borrowing authorizations at the annual town meeting for FY 2025. They both require a two-third vote at town meeting. The first borrowing authorization is for the transfer station project, article number 17, in the amount of $2,900,000. The second borrowing authorization is for Article Number 18, the Waterfront Infrastructure Projects, in the amount of $11,400,000. Both of these will also be ballot questions at the annual town meeting, which is held on May 16th. And just so the public is aware, the debt limit for the town of Chatham is based on our equalized valuation from FY 2023. Currently, we have available debt issuance in the amount of $260,273,429. This debt projection chart shows current authorized debt and projections for Articles 17 and 18. Approval of these borrowing articles does not negatively impact the town's borrowing authorization or the AAA bond rating. Article 17, Capital Project Transfer Station Improvements Phase 1 and Ballot Question in the amount of $2,900,000. This project is the continuation of efforts funded by the May 2023 Annual Town Meeting as Article 27 toward the reconstruction of the recycling area at the transfer station, also known as Phase 1. The Town of Chatham is proposing various upgrades to the transfer station located at 97 Sam Ryder Road, including a new residential drop-off area and rehabilitation of the concrete floor in the tipping building. The overall goal of the project is to increase facility efficiency and safety for transfer station users and employees. This project was divided into two phases to be sensitive to budgeting and to accommodate the continuity of operations at the transfer station. The first priority, phase two, for the new garage or storage building with employee areas has been awarded to the general contractor and is currently under construction. The location of this new building is circled in the yellow on the left side of the site plan. Redevelopment of the residential drop-off area, phase one, circled in orange near the bottom left of the site plan, will include new asphalt pavement, concrete pads, trash recycling compactors, parking areas, retaining walls, and other features. The new residential drop-off area will provide residents with a convenient location for the disposal of recyclable materials. You'll notice a large area near the center of the site plan that is circled in red dashed lines. This is a stump dump area that was discovered around the final design. The extent of the stump dump was far reaching. So by its discovery, it enabled us to go back and refine the design and reduce impact to this area. Through input from transfer station staff and cost effective approaches taken with the designers, we were able to refine the design and come up with a layout that will improve the function in these areas. For example, the swap shop circled in pink on the right side of the site plan will be relocated to a more accessible location and will have its own dedicated parking lot. Traffic patterns will be reorganized to make more effective use of the space. Transfer station employees will be provided with a new scale house with a restroom circled in purple near the center of the site plan to increase the efficiency of weighing in and out users, and the analog scale will be upgraded to a digital platform. The concrete tipping floor, circled in green on the upper part of the site plan, will also receive a new concrete surface, which will reduce both physical and sanitary hazards to employees and allow for better odor control, which will reduce negative impacts to nearby residents. The public accessibility and workplace safety improvements associated with phases one and two are necessary to bring the transfer station into compliance with Occupational Safety and Health Administration or OSHA standards 
and other federal mandates for accessibility under the Americans with Disability Act and State Architectural Access Board standards. The required changes address deficiencies and safety for all users and town employees, allowing people of all abilities to utilize this facility by creating the necessary access ramps, improved lighting, handrail modifications, replacements for fall protection, protection from vehicles, reconfiguring of existing compactor and container chutes, and drainage improvements to mitigate slips, trips, and flooding hazards. The additional funding appropriated under this article and the subsequent ballot question one will complete all phases of the transfer station improvement project initiated in 2019. The select board recommended this article with a vote of 4-0-0 and the finance committee recommended this article with a vote of 7-2-0. Another new addition for 2024 is our Director of Natural Resources, Greg Berman. Greg has quickly gotten his feet wet on a wide range of town projects and is here to present a new waterfront bond article. Welcome Greg and take it away. Hi, I'm Greg Berman, Director of Natural Resources here at the Town of Chatham, and I'm here today to talk about Article 18. Back in 2017, Annual Town Meeting approved an $11.3 million capital bond article for renovations and improvement for various waterfront infrastructure projects. Chatham has been spared from the inflation and COVID supply chain issues that resulted in widespread cost increases across the construction industry. While we've been able to offset town funds with over $2.3 million of grants, the 2017 bond is expected to be fully expended in the upcoming year as we continue to implement our goals of improving waterfront infrastructure. This funding was instrumental in enabling several projects to be completed and move seamlessly through the design, permitting, and into construction. Starting with an analysis back in 2015, the Fish Pier project, costing $1.6 million to the existing waterfront bond, involved the replacement of the observation deck, replacement of the fuel tanks and dispensers, new interior building columns, extensive electrolysis protection, new deck and stairway at the Warfinger building, Barcliff Ave extension safety improvements, a new sidewalk, and several utility and electrical improvements, and coastal resiliency upgrades. Part of the Fish Pier project was the South Jog Bulkhead, costing another $3.8 million. This facility plays a critical role in supporting year-round commercial operations, servicing the third largest fishing fleet in Massachusetts with multi-million dollar worth of landings. The Trap Dock Pier was completed in 2020 for $2.6 million from this bond, and the Trap Dock Shed project used $800,000 for the new shelter for protection of seafood product, finished in 2023, augmented by an ice machine and cooler box. Preliminary design work for Riders Cove cost 32,000 to the bond, but was paused as we've started focusing on other ongoing projects. So far for 90 Bridge Street, $206,000 has been spent from this waterfront bond. This has been for preliminary design and permitting consistent with the endorsed plan of the various waterfront committees and select board. Currently, dredging has been completed and we're moving ahead with the construction of the bulkhead. So as of now, we've spent roughly $9 million out of the original $11.3 million. The remaining $2.3 million in the waterfront bond is not going to be enough for the completion of the remaining 90 Bridge Street project phases. Based on the 2021 design, it's now estimated at about $7.3 million additional town funds needed as well as other important maintenance of waterfront facilities around town. Town staff have identified our additional waterfront infrastructure needs for fiscal year 25 to 29 necessary to maintain and improve our public facilities. These projects would include implementing the needed improvements at Riders Cove Landing, including replacement of the bulkhead and ramp, as well as new floats, bulkhead replacements at Barnhill Landing, replacing the Little Mill Pond Pier, whose piles foundations were installed in the 1930s, completion of the pedestrian walkway at the south jog of the Fish Pier, and continuation of the improvements saw for 90 Bridge Street, including new piers, floats, along with the return and repurposing of the historic Stage Harbor Boathouse as the new shellfish upwelling facility. This strategic investment aligns with the town's commitment to ensuring the longevity and functionality of our waterfront for the benefit of our community. 
Also, our shoreline has the additional challenge of adapting to impacts from sea level rise, coupled with the increasing severity and frequency of storms. Increasing the resiliency of our waterfront assets is going to be critical in ensuring their future sustainability. The select board voted unanimously to approve this new article, and the FinCom voted 6 to 3 to 0 to approve this 2024 bond article. Costs have increased significantly for coastal construction everywhere in Massachusetts. A Chatham example is the 90 Bridge Street project, which has gone from an estimated overall cost to the town of $3 million in 2016 to $5.2 million in 2021 and $8.8 million currently. This is despite the fact that the conceptual design in 2019, 35% design in 2021, and current design in 2024 all have not deviated from the footprint approved in the master plan. It's not just a 90 bridge street. Costs are rising for all our waterfront projects. Maintaining and increasing, where possible, facilities that provide public access to the shoreline is expensive. But being a waterfront community is one of the things that makes Chatham Chatham. Given the magnitude of the identified need and the timelines involved in the engineering permitting construction, another waterfront bond article will ensure stable funding mechanism to allow projects to go forward efficiently and in the most cost-effective manner. Individual projects funded through this bond would not go forward until the project has been prioritized, vetted within the community by multiple town committees, the public, and the select board. Your town staff are always looking for ways to offset projects funds with outside funding opportunities. During the last several years, over 2.3 million in grants has been awarded to Chatham for our waterfront infrastructure projects. This type of outside funding often comes with town match requirements, which we were able to produce from this waterfront bond. In addition to increasing grant opportunities, the existing bond has provided the opportunity to complete projects without delays and in the most cost-effective manner, with contractors already on site, resulting in significant cost savings to the town. This new bond will allow for the completion of the 90 Bridge Street project and the sorely needed maintenance of our existing waterfront infrastructure. The select board voted 500 to approve this new article and the Finance Committee voted 6-3-0 to approve this 2024 bond article. This is going to require a two-thirds vote at town meeting and will be ballot question number two at the election. Article 19, Water Capital, Water Mains from the Water Surplus Funds, Fiscal Year 2025 in the amount of $500,000. This article requests funding for the continued replacement of old, unlined, or undersized water mains along the public portion of Chatham's water service. Individual water services connected to these water mains will see an improved quality of water for customers who have these pipes delivering water to them. In years past, smaller water mains and water services were installed using pipes made from different material, including lead, steel, or copper. Unlined water mains may leach iron or other contaminants into the water. Replacement of these pipes will help provide better quality water and may also conserve water by preventing wasting water through possible leaks from old pipes. Undersized water mains will be replaced with a water main of a minimum diameter of eight inches to improve the flow of water for better fire protection. The select board recommended this article with a vote of 500 and the finance committee recommended this article with a vote of 900. Article 20. Capital Sewer Department, Capital Improvements, Repairs, and Upgrades. There are four different components to this article. Lining of 8-inch AC water main for $1 million. Rehab of septage building lakeside for $265,000. Original sewer collection system repairs for $170,000. And WPCF electronic systems upgrade for $300,000. This will be a transfer from Wastewater Capital Stabilization Fund. Total amount is $1,735,000. $1 million for the lining of 8-inch AC sewer main. 8-inch asbestos cement or AC pipe was installed around 1970 as part of the original sewer system downtown. The expected life of AC pipe is around 50 years. It is recommended that this pipe be relined where possible to prevent expensive ruptures. 
As part of the lining, all associated valves and manholes along this length of sewer should be replaced and or repaired. Lining sewer mains where possible is much less disruptive to neighborhoods since it can be done at night and there is virtually no disturbance to the pavement. It is also much more cost effective than open cut methods of construction. Lining can't be performed everywhere, so it's important that we target the correct locations with the right treatment. Liners used in these situations can be expected to last another 50 to 70 years. $265,000 to rehabilitate Septage Building Lakeside. This is the first line of defense for sewage entering the treatment plant to remove grit, grease, and solids from entering the WPCF. All of Chatham's wastewater enters the treatment plant via this tank through five force mains. This lakeside Raptor tank is showing signs of deterioration due to the harsh atmospheric conditions in the influent building. The equipment has several leaks that have been temporarily repaired, but will need a more permanent solution. You can see the leaks along the side of the tank. The auger to move the solids through the tank has malfunctioned and movement of materials through the system requires a great deal of manual labor. Modifications to the grit removal system and the grease removal system are needed for proper removal. An overall maintenance assessment will be performed to bring the equipment back to optimal working conditions. $175,000, original sewer system repairs. The original sewer collection system was installed in the late 1960s and early 1970s, mostly in the downtown area. The condition of the sewer pipes and manholes need rehabilitation due to age. This would address areas that need to be upgraded and where lining isn't a good option due to the existing size of the pipe. It would be prudent for the town to create an annual budget to address these types of deficiencies. As such, this article will likely become an annual request or to be replenished once funds are depleted. $300,000 WPCF electronic systems upgrade. This warrant article is to upgrade the core server and network infrastructure at the WPCF plant. The upgrade is required due to the current server reaching its end of life in March 2025. Because the system is running in a virtual server environment, it is essential that the servers are up to date and current to support the software used. The expected lifespan of the servers is five years. After five years, there is no hardware support or warranty. This upgrade will entail the purchase of two Dell servers and appropriate software licensing for five years. Some additional network equipment will also be purchased due to the age of the equipment. All network switches on site are from the original construction and are past end of life. The select board recommended this article with a vote of 5-0-0. The finance committee recommended this article with a vote of 9-0-0. Thank you, Rob. Don't forget, the town's website is a great resource for town meeting. In addition to the warrant, you will find Town Meeting Central, where we have compiled a wealth of town meeting information, including a scorecard of each article detailing all recommendation and votes. Town meeting will be held at the Monomoy Regional Middle School, 425 Crow Road, beginning at 6 p.m. on Monday, May 13th. This is Ted Keon, Coast Resource Director. I'm going to be discussing the dredging article uh, at town meeting. We are requesting $400,000 to support our dredging effort, which includes construction, um, dredging services, as well as permitting, engineering, and all their associated costs with our dredging efforts. Uh, this has become a relatively routine uh, article for town meeting. The amount being requested of 400,000 is similar to past years, although in past years it was split between $100,000 in the capital program and a $300,000 separate article. Uh, the town manager and finance director this year uh, decided to put it all in a separate $400,000 uh, standalone article. Um, this is very important. Uh, changes along our outer coast and shoals um, within our channels have been very challenging over several years, and this is an important process for us to maintain navigation for both our commercial fleet and our recreational fleet, as well as our public safety uh, functions, both the Coast Guard and the Harbor Master. So we look for your support, and thank you very much. Article 22, Child Care Voucher Program. This article seeks funding for the Chatham Child Care Voucher Program currently administered by a third party, 
Monomoy Community Services. Funding approved at the 2023 annual town meeting under Article 35 was $100,000. With the recommendation of the Human Services Committee, this article seeks increased funding of $25,000 for a total of $125,000. At this level, the program will assist and support a greater number of families in Chatham. Awards are paid directly to the licensed providers, and they range between $500 and $1,500. This article ensures that the continued ability to provide year-round child care assistance for families living and working in Chatham. The application and packet is available on the town's website. The select board voted to recommend this article 500, and the finance committee voted to recommend this article at 900. Article 23, establish a Town of Chatham Adult Supportive Day Program. Hello, my name is Leah LaCrosse and I'm the Director of Community Services. Today I'll be discussing Article 23, which asks the Town to vote to raise and appropriate $273,682 for the purpose of establishing and funding an Adult Supportive Day Program within the Town of Chatham and to raise this amount through the tax rate. This appropriation will establish an adult supportive day program within the town. This will include hiring one full-time program manager, two part-time program assistants, and one part-time van driver. As the minimum ratio of staff to participants is five to one, five participants to one staff person. Funding is also needed for other health and safety requirements needed to implement this program. It is anticipated that at the start, it will be a two day per week program offering and will eventually move to three days per week. In the past six months, the Chatham COA has seen a dramatic increase in the number of participants and their families seeking assistance for dementia and dementia related issues. In particular, the demand for family caregivers seeking respite services has more than doubled. Family members caring for a relative with dementia often experience a complete upheaval of their normal lives and face multifaceted, complex, and stressful life situations that can have significant consequences. Currently, the only option for Chatham residents is the Town of Orleans Rock Harbor Respite Program, 10 miles away in Orleans. Opening a new adult supportive day program at the Chatham COA Center for Active Living would address this immediate need and get the families the help that they need in a timely manner. The requested funding will cover staffing, required staff training, furniture that complies with recommendations found in the agent dementia friendly design considerations for physical infrastructure by the Executive Office of Elder Affairs, required technology including door alarms and cameras for participant safety, programming and programming supplies. As this program is supportive and not a medical model, no clinical staff is required. Currently, we have 10 participants in the Town of Orleans program. The funding offset of an average of $992 per month based in FY 2023 numbers will be used towards the in-house program versus participation in the Town of Orleans program. Additionally, a $60 per day program fee paid by each participant will offset the cost of meals and some program costs. Financial assistance for any qualified person is available through Elder Services of Cape Cod in the Islands. Staff has submitted a grant for the startup cost to offer and staff the program. Grant award announcements are expected in early April 2024. Grant funds received will offset the amount raised on the tax rate. Any unexpected funds from this article will roll over into the next fiscal program year. The select board voted to recommend this article 410. The finance committee voted to recommend this article 430. Article 24, Stabilization Fund Appropriation. This article is to transfer 150,000 from overlay surplus to the stabilization fund. Funding the Stabilization Fund will keep the town in compliance with the financial policies set and to have the Stabilization Fund balance at 5% of the town's operating budget less debt service. This article has no impact on the tax rate. Select Board voted 5 in favor, 0 opposed, and Finance Committee voted 9 in favor, 0 opposed. Article 25, Other Post-Employment Benefits Liability Trust Fund Appropriation. 
This article is to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $150,000 for the purpose of funding the other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. This is an annual article and the fund is a mechanism to fund future financial obligations for health insurance benefits for eligible retired employees of the town. If approved at town meeting, the impact of this article would be one cent on the tax rate. The select board voted five in favor, zero opposed, and the finance committee voted nine in favor, zero opposed. Article 26, capital article, transfer station roll-off truck purchase for $361,700. The 2008 Mack roll-off truck is heavily relied upon to haul various types of recycling materials to various on and off Cape locations. Trips occur on average nine to 12 times per week during the summer and three to six times per week in the off season. As such, the Mack has 325,000 miles on it. Combined with the other roll-off truck, these trucks are key to hauling recycling materials from the transfer station. Anything from glass, plastic, paper, cardboard, or metal, the roll-off trucks are a key piece of equipment for the transfer station. By contrast, the second roll-off truck is only three years old and already has over 140,000 miles on it. Any major breakdowns, repairs, will negatively impact the remaining roll-off truck, transfer station staff, and operations at the transfer station, and may require us to hire outside additional trucking. This request is for the truck and a roll-off container. Select Board recommended this article with a vote of 5-0-0, and the Finance Committee recommended this article with a vote of 9-0-0. Hi. I'm Terry Whalen, Principal Projects and Operations Administrator, and I'm also the Airport Commission Staff Liaison. I'm going to be speaking to Articles 27 and 28. Article 27 seeks funding of three capital projects identified by the Airport Commission for implementation to address deficiencies in existing town-owned buildings at the Chatham Municipal Airport. Building projects are deemed to be maintenance projects and are not eligible for Federal Aviation Administration grant funding under their Airport Improvement Program. The requested $170,000 is the sum of the following projects. Installation of a new emergency generator at $130,000, Quonset roof repairs at $13,000, and electrical service repairs at $27,000. The proposed new emergency generator will provide 100% backup power supply during outages to the airport facility beyond the current generator's capacity to serve only select navigation equipment. The Quonset roof is suffering from leaks and needs repairs. And lastly, an outdated electrical panel needs upgrade to modernize and bring it up to current codes. The select board voted 5-0-0 to support this article, and the finance committee voted 8-0-1 to support this article. Article 28, Chatham Municipal Airport Electrical Vehicle Charging Stations. Article 28 seeks upfront funding to facilitate the installation of level two and level three charging stations in the Chatham Municipal Airport's public parking lot directly across George Ryder Road from the Police Department Town Office's annex site. The project will install three level two charging stations serving six parking spaces and two level three charging stations serving four parking spaces. The requested $440,700 provides upfront funding to qualify for reimbursement grants, incentives, and credits available upon installation of the EV charging stations. The funding requested in this article leverages approximately $325,100 in grants, incentives, and credits, resulting in a net expense to the town of $115,600, or approximately 26% of the total project cost for the proposed EV charging stations. The select board voted 5-0-0 to support this article, and the finance committee voted to support this article 7-1-1. Article 29, Property Acquisition at Zero Pleasant Street, South Chatham. This is a placeholder article that would authorize the select board to acquire a parcel of land or a portion thereof located at Zero Pleasant Street in South Chatham. A preliminary discussion was had with representatives of the property. If the property or a portion is offered to the town and agreeable terms have been reached, the select board will vote on the matter in an open meeting. A motion will be offered from the town meeting floor. This requires a two-thirds vote. 
Article 30 through Article 38 are for the Community Preservation Committee. There are a total of nine Community Preservation Articles for the FY 2025 budget. The funding sources for the Community Preservation Articles are from the CPC Undesignated Fund Balance, CPC Estimated Receipts, or from the Open Space Fund Balance, Historic Resources Fund Balance, or Community Housing Fund Balance. All of the CPC articles have been approved by the Community Preservation Committee, the Select Board, and the Finance Committee. Article 30 is an annual article to fund the administrative budget for community preservation in the amount of $15,000. Article 31 is another annual Community Preservation Committee article. The Community Preservation Act requires that each year 10% of estimated revenues are reserved or expended for open space, community housing, and historic resources. For FY 2025, we are reserving $160,000 for each for a total amount of $480,000. Article 32 is the funding of affordable housing trust in the amount of $750,000. The original request for this article by the Affordable Housing Trust was for $500,000. The Community Preservation Committee is dedicating $750,000 of funds for the Affordable Housing Trust in FY 2025. The need for affordable and attainable housing continues to be significant not only in Chatham but Cape-wide, and this funding helps with purchases of land or property for affordable housing. Article 33, this article is for funding the Lower Cape Housing Institute in the amount of $20,000. This article seeks two years of funding for the Lower Cape Institute, which provides training and technical assistance to the town of Chatham to create, preserve, and support community housing in the town and across the Lower and Outer Cape. Article 34 is to appropriate $75,000 for Forward at the Rock, Phase 2 in Dennis. FORWARD stands for Friends or Relatives with Autism and Related Disabilities. This funding is for a Cape-wide regional project. The purpose of these funds is to enable the regional housing project to create eight additional extremely affordable and supportive one-bedroom apartments for Cape Cod residents with autism and related developmental disabilities. The Community Preservation Committee funded Phase 1 Forward at the Rock in 2019 in the amount of $50,000. The Community Preservation Committee is dedicating $75,000 for Phase 2. Article 35 is to appropriate $100,000 for the purpose of funding Spring Rock Village Affordable Housing Project in Brewster. Spring Rock Village is a proposed development for 45 affordable rental housing units in Brewster. Residents and workers from Chatham and other towns supporting this project will receive a preference during the selection process. Article 36 is to appropriate $350,000 for the purpose of funding exterior renovations to retain and restore the U.S. Coast Guard Boathouse. This was originally proposed to the Community Preservation Committee for $700,000 in FY 2024. And in FY 2024, the Community Preservation Committee funded $350,000 for this project. And this article is dedicating another $350,000 in FY 2025 to complete the $700,000. The restoration and renovation of the iconic boathouse will provide an opportunity to enhance townwide shellfish resources while preserving a piece of the town's maritime heritage for Chatham. Article 37 is to appropriate $100,000 for the purpose of funding the construction of a press box at the Monomoy Regional High School. The press box will provide coaches, journalists, and other members of sporting events with a bird's eye view. The press box will be used for commentary and video footage for sporting events, award ceremonies, and other field activities. Article 38 is to appropriate $136,786 for the purpose of funding the rehabilitation of the town of Chatham's Little League Field, located at the Chatham Community Center. The existing Little League Field requires upgrades to fencing, bleachers, team benches, bluestone, and a new storage shed. The upgrades will provide children, parents, and the community with a safe and updated Little League Field. That concludes all of the Community Preservation Committee articles. Article 39, General Bylaw Amendment, Chapter 100, Scrivener's Error. 
Article 39 proposes to correct a Scrivener's error in the Airport Approach Protection General Bylaw, Chapter 100. As originally approved and adopted in 1958, this Chatham General Bylaw section, then contained in Section 56, Airport Approach Bylaw, the sentence in question read as it is proposed to be amended in this Article 39. However, at the May 12, 1997 Special Town Meeting Warrant Article 11 proposed a format change to the general bylaws which resulted in Section 56 Airport Approach changing to Chapter 13 Airport Approach Protection. This 1997 article was only intended to effectuate an administrative format change to the general bylaws. However, the supporting documentation for this Warren article, which contained the text of the new Chapter 13 Airport Approach Protection, inadvertently failed to include the word not in the proposed language to be amended here. This Scrivener's error persisted in a subsequent administrative format change that went before town meeting in 2006, where Chapter 13 Airport Approach Protection was a change to Chapter 100 Airport Approach Protection. Correcting this Scrivener's error in the general bylaw also restores consistency with Massachusetts General Law Chapter 90, Section 40B, as intended in the original language of the Section 56 bylaw adopted in 1958. The Select Board voted 4-0-0 to support this article and the Finance Committee voted 7-0-0 also to support this article. Article 40, General Bylaw Amendment, Chapter 100 Definitions. Article 40 also proposes to amend the Airport Approach Protection General Bylaw by updating the existing map reference in the Airport Approach Zone definition. Chapter 100 was first enacted in 1958 to prevent the creation of airport hazards. The definition of Airport Approach Zone included a reference to a February 1958 map on file with the Chatham Town Clerk. That 1958 map is now outdated. Since 1958, there have been several changes to the airspace used by aircraft arriving and departing the airport, including regulatory input from the Federal Aviation Administration through its publication of advisory circulars and safety improvements represented in the FAA-approved airport layout plan. These changes implement the Airport Commission's ongoing efforts to improve safety for pilots, aircraft passengers, and everyone on the ground in the airport's vicinity. The 1958 map needs to be replaced with a map reflecting the reality of aircraft arrivals and departures today. As noted in the article, a positive vote will result in the map of record changing to an updated map of airport approach zones, Chatham, Massachusetts, dated March 2024. The substitution of this new map reconciles airport approach zone areas with current runway conditions, airport layout plan features, and FAA advisory circulars. This new revised surface shape maintains the existing 20 to 1 vertical slope of the 1958 map surface areas and does not change the slope. The configuration in the March 2024 map comports with the FAA Surface 4 and Advisory Circular 150-5300-138, Table 3-3. The airport approach zones are distinct and separate from the Runway Protection Zones, or RPZs, which are two-dimensional surface areas intended to enhance protection of people and property on the ground within 1,200 linear feet from the end of each runway. The Select Board voted 4-0-0 to support this article, and the Finance Committee voted 7-0-0 to support this article. Hello, my name is Jason Holm, and I'm the Harbor Master for the Town of Chatham. Today, I will be speaking on Article 41 for the May Annual Town Meeting. Article 41 is raising the maximum fine limit in the Waterways Bylaw from $200 per offense to $300 per offense. This would allow a higher fine for more serious water-related infractions while still allowing lower fines for less serious offenses. A $300 fine is the maximum allowable by state law. $300 waterways fines are allowed in neighboring communities such as Falmouth, Barnstable, and Eastham. Currently, the Chatham General Bylaw allows for $300 fines for animal control, historic preservation, and wetlands protection. The current fine adopted in the 1980s 
no longer provides as much of an effective deterrent to vessel operation and related infractions as it did when it was first adopted over 40 years ago. The select board voted in favor 5-0-0, and the finance committee voted in favor 8-0-0. Hello, my name is Katie Donovan. I'm the director of community development for the town of Chatham. I'm here to introduce Article 42, which is a general bylaw amendment for the Inspectional Services Revolving Fund, requesting to increase the percentage of revenues from the general fund to be placed in the revolving fund. This article is to see if the town will vote to amend Chapter 37, Article 1 of the General Bylaws to increase the amount of general revenues credited to the Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53E and one half, the Inspectional Services Revolving Fund account, from 10% to 30% for the fiscal year commencing on July 1st, 2024. The purpose of a revolving fund is to segregate revenues generated by a specific operation and to restrict, those, restrict the use of those revenues to the purpose for which they are collected. Chapter 37, Article 1 stipulates the purpose for which funds may be expended, along with the authorization required. This increase from 10% to 30% allows for the Town of Chatham to credit a greater percentage of funds received to offset the compensation for contract inspections from the Inspectional Services Revolving Fund. Since 2016, the Town's plumbing inspections have been paid on a per inspection basis out of the Revolving Fund. And when the Town's part-time electrical inspector retired in 2021, the Town began paying for electrical inspections on a per inspection basis as well through a combination of the salary budget and the revolving fund. And moving forward, we would like to pay for all of these inspections through the revolving fund. Annual town meeting in 2023 approved an increase to the limit that can be spent from the revolving fund to $150,000. But without the amendment to the bylaw, those funds are not available in the revolving fund. The select board voted to recommend this article by a vote of five in favor and zero against and the Finance Committee voted to recommend this article, eight in favor and zero against. This is Tom Barth, Deputy Director of the DPW for the Town of Chatham. Article 43, General Bylaw Amendment, New Tree Protection Bylaw. The purpose of this bylaw is to clarify and amplify the provisions of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 87, the Shade Tree Law. A shade tree is any tree on or within the boundaries of a public right of way except for a state highway. This bylaw is to include protection of all town trees. A town tree is a tree other than a public shade tree growing in a park, golf course, or other land owned, managed, or controlled by the town of Chatham. This bylaw does not include trees growing on private property. This bylaw will allow the town of Chatham to enforce fines to anyone who without permit, who willfully cut down, girdle, or otherwise destroy a public shade tree or town tree. Fines, penalties, and damages paid to the Town of Chatham under this bylaw shall be paid into a tree fund. Trees are recognized for their ability to improve air quality, protect from glare, heat, and noise. They aid in the stabilization of soil, provide natural food and drainage control, create wildlife habits, and reduce ambient carbon in the atmosphere. Therefore, the overriding goal of this bylaw is to preserve and protect Chatham's tree canopy for generations yet to come. Motion was made by Select Board Member Dean Nicastro to amend the Town of Chatham's general bylaw to include the Tree Protection Bylaw. Select Board Recommendation Approve 500. Finance Committee Recommendation Approve 900. Article 44 is to establish a Tree Protection Bylaw Revolving Fund. Pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53 and a half, a revolving fund must be established to collect funds for a specific purpose and where the funds are to be held. The expenditure limit will be established at $5,000 for FY 2025. The town bylaw stipulates the purposes for which the funds can be expended, as well as the authorization required. The select board voted five in favor, zero opposed, and the finance committee voted Eight in favor, zero opposed. Article 45, Community Preservation Act, General Bylaw Amendment. The Community Preservation Committee recommends amending the Community Preservation Bylaws by changing the words affordable and committee in Affordable Housing Committee to Chatham Community Housing Partnership. 
This change will reflect the current town committee names and also changing the words will to shall. Select board voted four in favor, zero opposed, and the finance committee voted nine in favor, zero opposed. Article 46, non-binding resolution, regional municipal pool facility. This article asks a question of town meeting to see if the town wishes to pursue and participate in the establishment of a regional swimming pool facility. This is an exploratory question to town meeting to gauge interest in participating in the establishment of a regional pool facility at a to be determined location. This proposal is non-binding, meaning it's not a formal commitment, but rather an exploration of interest. Ross Colon, a member of our community, has requested the inclusion of this question as an article at our annual town meeting warrant. Select board recommendation their vote to approve was 400, and the Finance Committee recommendation as a vote to approve was 350. Article 47, an act authorizing the Select Board to acquire year round housing occupancy restrictions. This article is proposed by citizen petition. It is a request to file special legislation at the State House following town meeting approval. If approved, the Select Board or approved municipal board could acquire these restrictions for rental or owned homes when an owner chooses to place one on their property. The restrictions will be recorded ensuring they are legally binding. Approval for acquiring these restrictions would require a vote by the select board. The restrictions can be for a few years or in perpetuity. The act would come into effect immediately upon its passage by the state legislature. The select board voted to recommend this article at a vote of 5-0-0, and the finance committee voted to recommend this article at a vote of 7-0-0. Thank you for watching the 2024 annual town meeting preview show. The warrant for town meeting is available online at the town's website. Hard copies have been mailed out to each household and are available at town offices. The meeting takes place on Monday, May 13th at 6 p.m. at the Monomoy Regional Middle School 425 Kroll Road, child care is available by reservation. The deadline to reserve a child care spot for the May 13th town meeting is Friday, May 10th by 12 noon. In addition to regular broadcasts on Comcast channel 1072, you can rewatch our 2024 annual town meeting preview show on demand at the Chatham TV YouTube channel. We will post a link to the town's website as well. Thank you for watching.